What's going on everyone, Austin John Plays here, and today we got some information that the Nintendo 3DS and Wii U eShop are going to be ending, and what that means for Pokemon Bank. Yesterday, there was an article that came out that says Nintendo is going to be closing the 3DS and the Wii U eShops in 2023. As of May 23rd, 2022, it will no longer be possible to use a credit card to add funds to the eShop for Wii U or 3DS. And as of August 29th, 2022, it is no longer possible to use a Nintendo eShop card to add funds. However, it is still possible to redeem download codes until March 2023. This is similar to how they rolled out the end of the Nintendo Wii eShop, meaning that they made it so you can't add more funds and then you can't you redeem any more uh, eShop cards, and then eventually the store closed down, making some of the software that exists on the platform never able to be downloaded again. Well, for Pokemon fans, that raises one small issue. And for that, we have to go and we need to use a capture card that we haven't used in a very long time. Yep, my 3DS capture card. Wow, I have spent so many hours configuring this thing to look good and usable. Truth be told, I would have recorded this video last night, except it, it took like three hours for this thing to come back to life. You guys remember this one? Yeah, this, this is a classic. So if you're not familiar, Pokemon Bank, is software that's provided by the Pokemon company that was a subscription-based service that makes it so that you could pay them. I think it's like $6 a year. It allows you to transfer Pokemon from Pokemon X and Y, Omega Ruby, Alpha Sapphire, Sun and Moon, Ultra Sun, Ultra Moon into Pokemon Bank, which can then be transferred into Pokemon Home via Nintendo Switch. And it also came with a piece of software called the Poke Transporter, which allows you to import save data from Diamond Pearl, Black, White, Black 2, White 2, yeah, the, the DS games. The Poke Transporter was used for DS games, and the Pokemon Bank was used to import those DS games in Pokemon Transporter into Pokemon Bank, as well as just native 3DS titles. And then you were able to transfer everything from Pokemon Bank into Pokemon Home. Great. This raised concerns for Pokemon fans immediately as far as what's going to be happening. So when the Nintendo eShop for the 3DS goes offline, what's that gonna be? March of 2023, about a year and a month from now, you are not going to be able to download Pokemon Bank to any new 3DS devices. That means that if you have a Nintendo 3DS or 2DS or anything from the 3DS family of systems, and you try to download any software, including Pokemon Bank and Poke Transporter, you will not be able to. However, if you have Pokemon Bank and Transporter already on a device after the eShop goes down, Pokemon Bank is actually going to become free. You're not going to have to pay the $6 a year in order to transfer your Pokemon to and from Pokemon Bank. And as always, there was no fee for transporting a limited amount of Pokemon from Pokemon Bank into Pokemon Home. However, I, there's the fee for, you know, having a whole bunch of storage in Pokemon Home. This is the only way to get Pokemon from Generation 1 and 2, where Pokemon Red, Blue, Silver, Gold, Crystal, all of those things exist on the eShop now. And if you don't purchase them before 2023, 13 months from now, you're never going to be able to get this software on a DS again through legitimate means. As of right now, there is no official date on when they plan to bring down the Pokemon Bank servers, which is actually what's going to be needed in order to, you know, keep using Pokemon Bank. Who knows how long it will be? At this time, they didn't say if they have any plans on bringing the classic Pokemon titles to the Nintendo Switch. Maybe that's something that is going to be released three years down the road. Pokemon Red, Blue, Gold, Silver, Crystal, etc. Maybe that will become part of the Nintendo Switch Online expansion pack if they introduce Game Boy and Game Boy Color games. And maybe Pokemon Home is going to have some compatibility for that to sort of future-proof these titles. Pokemon Red, Blue, and Yellow originally went on the eShop for the Pokemon 20th anniversary six years ago, and I think they were $8 each. And then they introduced the Gold Silver games, and I think there was also, if you played until the end, there was the event that you got Celebi, and then you were able to transfer that through 
either Poke... I think it was Poke Transporter was actually used for the Game Boy and Game Boy Color games. They never released the third gen games on here, right? Why would they? Because they already had the remakes on, on the 3DS. Oh man, I forgot how slow this thing is. Oh, and we have to do a system update. Of course. <laughs> so, if you're a content creator and you like to shiny hunt on old systems, uh, I still have my original 3DS here. Yes, this is the one that has the Ultra Lock on it, which I don't have the SD card, but the SD card is backed up. So I would have to get that SD card on here for this to function in its current state. These things, I mean, with the capture cards, they're, they're definitely collector's items. But Nintendo 3DSs that have Pokemon Bank are going to eventually become finite. And there's going to be no official way to get that software on a DS if it does not have it. It is completely free to download Pokemon Bank. It costs zero dollars in the eShop. It's only the subscription that costs anything. So if you have old systems lying around, like to future proof, I'm going to be taking both of my Zelda 3DSs and I'm going to be downloading Pokemon Bank on there because the save data is held on the cartridge. So you could do stuff on a cartridge and then put it in a different 3DS. Those ones are going to remain on the shelf, but I'm going to do this for a different one. I'm going to try to put it in like foam and then put it inside of a container so it's exposed to least air as possible. Hopefully nothing happens to the battery. I think even if the battery goes, the 3DS does work if it's plugged in. In fact, I got to I got a weird little blinking icon here. I don't know if that means my battery's no good no more. I don't know, if I unplug it. Oh no, I, this thing still holds a charge. Great. I mean, this thing, this thing's a powerhouse. Man, all the DS's are powerhouses. My micro, that thing holds a charge for like two months. In addition, any content creators who ever plan on using the Wii U eShop for games, now is gonna be like the beginning of the end where you have to go on there, you have to download this software if you know, you don't have a, uh, oh wow, Kirby's Extra Epic Yarn, remember that? That was the, that was the last game, the last official game. Found it in the eShop. Oh golly, does it take a long time to search through here. But yeah, Pokemon Bank, completely free to download and annual fee, oh it's $5 a year. I thought it was six, nope, $5 a year. I stopped paying for this after I did one big transfer of everything from Pokemon Bank to Pokemon Home. Where's my wish list? That means that for the digital versions of the Pokemon trading card game, which only is digital for this platform, blue and red, yellow, gold, silver, and crystal, which are all now $10. I guess maybe they were on sale before, except for trading card game, that's six bucks. This is going to be the last time that you can get these. This also means that you have to have Pokemon Bank and Transporter on devices if you ever plan to use the DS distribution cartridges. I think that were active during the black and white era. Also, if you ever use any save modification tools to trigger old mystery gifts, those you have to have, you know, Pokemon Bank already existing on that device to, you know, bring over any newly generated Pokemon from that. I got $19 on here and I only have what? In May, I'm no longer going to be able to add funds onto here. So I have between now and May to add funds directly or between now and August to buy eShop cards to add funds on here. I don't know if I'm going to purchase all the old Pokemon games. I feel like I should just to have them in case I ever want to play them on this system. Presumably, once the eShop goes down, even though I own the software, I'm not gonna be able to re-download it to any device that doesn't already have it. So, it's, it's the beginning of the end, guys. The beginning of the end. Start panic buying. <laughs> this, is, this is your toilet paper. Start panic buying your toilet paper. If you wanted to have a living Dex, of Pokemon from the Generation 1 games that are symbolized with that little Game Boy icon, you would have to have <clears throat> red and blue downloaded to your device, and then gold and silver downloaded to your device, and the Celebi, you would have to have crystal. Yellow would become redundant. I believe there's a way that you can sort of trick the game into changing your trainer ID with it's a really old glitch. I think it's I think it's the, the the sixth floor card glitch or something. But there's a way to change your trainer ID 
to make it match what the trainer ID was for the Game Freak distribution for the Mew. And then there's a way to get Mew to spawn in, same Mew glitch as ever. And then there's a different glitch that you can do in order to change the Mew's stats that would then cause it to be shiny if you ever transferred it over. But just a regular person not doing any crazy exploits, if you try to do the Mew glitch now to get Mew in these games, you cannot transfer Mew over. In fact, I'm pretty sure I have a glitched Mew in this Pokemon Red, and it just doesn't show up in Transporter or Bank. Oh God, it's so blurry. It actually looks better on the game capture software, but it looks so blurry here. Plus like, gotta love double letter boxes. So blurry. Yep, that's me. I do not know why I named these these things. I think I was just doing a stream and people said to name them these. Oh yeah, there we go. There's a Mew. <laughs> and because my ID doesn't match what the official event Mew was, it doesn't transfer over. And then, oh, was this a glitch Gengar? Yep, a glitch Gengar that I got. He can't transfer over either. Anything that's done with the Mew glitch cannot be transferred over. Oh, that's right. I wasn't able to tap A in front of a bush. Who has cut? Mew, get me out of here. Oh god. Uh. This, this tune, this chip tune, it's ingrained in my brain. Now is also probably a great time to remind everyone to uh, make sure you download any updates that are needed for these, uh, for, uh, these softwares. My password Pokemon Bank has expired so I can't use Transporter. <laughs> well just take my word that, you know, the glitched Mew doesn't work in Transporter because I've tried it. Tried it many times. We're now at the end of an era, Poketransporter and Pokemon Bank. You're going to have to uh, download them to all of your devices if you ever want to use them in the future. Which, currently, in its current state, you do have to pay for it. And then March 2023, when you're no longer allowed to download them, the Pokemon Bank servers are still going to be online, while the eShop servers are no longer online, so you can't, you know, do that. Anything I'm missing? I think there were other softwares that required this. Yes, on both platforms, users will not be able to purchase any content. On 3DS, this includes paid content, which plays as passes in software such as Street Pass Meat Plaza, Theme Shop, Nintendo Badge Arcade, and Bank. You will not be able to purchase the subscription for Bank. However, Pokemon Company has said that they are going to make it free, so you're good to go until, you know, they decide to take the service offline. Hope you found this video helpful for uh, the very end of the 3DS, for its very, very long life in existence. March 27th, 2011, in a month, is gonna mark the 11, 11th anniversary of this console existing. That's crazy. Hope you found this video helpful. Do your necessary preparations. Be sure to subscribe here for more big updates as far as this. Until next time, Austin John out.